Fondly called Dr. Doug by many, Dr. Doug Phillips is widely known and recognized for his adventurous travels in Alabama's wildlands as the host of the highly rated public television program, Discovering Alabama, an educational documentary series featuring the natural history and natural wonders of wonderful Alabama. In addition to creating, producing, and starring in this three-time Emmy award-winning series, Dr. Phillips has pioneered many other important Alabama initiatives for education and conservation, including the acclaimed model school curriculum, Discovering Our Heritage, incorporating environmental education to integrate the teaching of history, geography, science, mathematics, and language arts, a community collaborative approach, and also recognized as the, uh, the nationally recognized model, the author of this model for wildland conservation known as Alabama Forever Wild. Dr. Philip Ho Phillips holds the position of Coordinator for Environmental Information and Education with the Alabama Museum of Natural History located at the University of Alabama where he has also authored numerous publications, including the national award-winning books, Discovering Alabama Wetlands and Discovering Alabama Forest. Please welcome Dr. Phillips. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Doug Phillips and you're not. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Most of you are too young to even know where that comes from. That's a, I'm enjoying the blank looks on people's faces when I say that. I uh, appreciate the introduction, Lucinda. That's another fun thing these days when I'm introduced as widely known and people in the audience don't know who, <laughs> who he is. <laughs> That's okay. I like it that way, as I happen to be. A loner who prefers to be alone in the Alabama woods. Hey, that's where I just came from this morning. I saw a tree, a couple of them. But uh, I'm proud, flattered to be invited to speak to you all today. And the first thing I want to tell you is buy my book. It's a good book. This is the one, Discovering Alabama Forest. It's all about Alabama's wonderful forest. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm getting old enough now, I like to have a little fun rather than be totally serious. So I was in the bookstore the other day and there was a couple perusing the books in the nature section, you know. And uh, I was back there looking for something, but they, they stopped in front of my book on the shelf and they were looking at it. Of course, they didn't know me, I didn't know them, and there's no way they would know who I am, but they're looking at it, and I said, oh, that's a really good book there. <laughs> and they said, really? I said, yeah, I know the author. <laughs> and I walked off. <laughs> and the young man who wanted to know if I was the guy on Discovering Alabama a while ago, and I didn't get a chance to finish, I think he left thinking I was denying that, but uh, I was really just waiting for the right setup to say, I play him on TV. <laughs> All, right. All right, enough fun. Let's get serious. Wait a minute. All right, how many of you have actually seen a tree? Ah. All right, well, okay, well in conclusion, I gotta go back to the woods. All right, how many of you have hugged a tree? Yeah, yeah, see, it narrows it down some, huh? Yeah. Well, you need to be hugging a tree. Do you know? Think about it. They are alive. They're living creatures. And in the greenery of trees is performed the yet not completely understood 
essential function of taking sunlight and creating food, in essence. You know, yes, the smaller plants do that too, but trees are the largest landscape growing thing to do that. And did you know trees are also the largest living creature on earth? Yes. Maybe not the ones in Alabama, although we've got some pretty big ones. But you can go to other regions where the trees are bigger, heavier than, you know, anything else you can find. Um, but no other region is as rich with trees as ours. And I've been very impressed with your campus. It's got a, a lot of nice greenery on it now, and I think you all are, who have a hand in that are to be congratulated. Um, but uh, let me, let me uh, share this with you. You know, back in the day, before I had a TV show and I used to actually have a chance to be alone in the woods without camera crew or other stuff, um, I was still known pretty much as a rambler of the outdoors and got invited to speak to groups about Alabama. And I would tell an audience, and we can pretend that today, I would say, close your eyes, think of Alabama, and tell me your image of Alabama. And invariably, folks, I would get stuff like, you know, uh, well, Huntsville's up there, and Montgomery's down there, and the interstate runs over here, you know, and the airplane flies up there. And you go up this road to Grandma's house, you know, and I'd say, well, okay, you know, that's kind of a road map image of your state, you know, and it's, it's kind of that way, you know, I mean, isn't that kind of how we think of our, our area, our communities and all, you know, where you go past the McDonald's and turn right at the Burger King and go past the Methodist Church up to the bank, <laughs> you know, and you go past the Baptist Church to the next bank. Anyway, <laughs> hey, that's a statement about the layout of our communities these days, huh? Which is another reason it's so important to keep the trees, to keep it as beautiful as possible and as healthy as possible. But, you know, that's a roadmap image of our state. And I dare say that's kind of the way many people think of Alabama. But folks, and I don't have all day to do much today, but I brought this one prop, a show and tell prop. Um, so I would have a group, the group open their eyes, you know, and I say, well, guess what? There's another image of your state. I'll move this around a little bit so everybody can get a, a glance at it. This, <laughs> this map is obviously getting some wear. Uh, there's a crack in Alabama. Uh, this, is, this is only the geology map of Alabama. And without going into detail about what the color code over here in the margin means, if I had time for just one prop like today, this would be it because at a glance you can see how richly diverse Alabama is in, in geology and geological wonder. I got this thing trained. Let's see if it'll do it here. That on? Okay. Um, we have more geological diversity than any other state except California. California's a tremendously big state. But here's the point, okay? We could overlay on top of that great geological diversity the soils of Alabama, over 300 soil types, including some of the best soils in the world right here in Alabama. And we could overlay on top of that the rivers and streams, 70,000 miles of rivers and streams in Alabama. Some of the greatest aquatic diversity in the world right here in Alabama. And then that supports the great Alabama forests. And probably some of you guys in here know foresters and others who tend to think of Alabama forests as pines and hardwoods. <laughs> um, 
we actually have more tree species than any other state. And we have over 70 different forest communities in Alabama. Now, the geological diversity, the soil wonders, the water, river, streams wonders, and the great forests, you could overlay on top of that the myriad habitats, niches, flora, fauna, plants, animals that Alabama has. And all of that is one grand magic world of nature that in the last 10 or 12 years, maybe some of y'all weren't even walking around too well at that point when this, just, when this started happening, world leading scientists began to point to Alabama and going, wow, you know, Alabama is one of the most naturally diverse regions on planet Earth. And the largest living creature is the tree. And you know, there's a lot of history that goes with that, but you'll have to buy my book. Well, you, or you can borrow this one from Lucinda because I'm presenting this to her in a moment as a, as a gift for being foolish enough to think I would be a speaker for, <laughs> for your group. <laughs> well, um, uh, to continue with that point, you know, there, is, there, is, there are living trees in Alabama that were here when Columbus landed. Yep. And they were standing tall when George Washington was the first president. And some of those trees are still standing. So when you encounter something like that, it's not just a beautiful tree, it's living history. And some of those trees are gonna be living long past when you and I are in another place. Alabama's got a lot of grand wonder. Um, from Lucinda's book, let me share one line. And this is kind of the point I think we all, I hope, can agree with. A small print. Yeah, I'm not 21 anymore. All right. Here is a quote, a famous quote from a famous guy that I hope you all know about, but you probably don't because our schools don't teach it, and I get angry about that. I'm trying to catch up with that teaching for everyone, but here's the famous quote. That land is a community is the basic concept of ecology. But that land is to be loved and respected is an extension of ethics. All right. Who knows who said that? Well, let me enlighten you a little bit. There's a gentleman who was um, one of the first forestry experts, wildlife experts, and overall naturalist uh, in, the, in the nation, uh, really active in the early 1900s. And he became known as the father of conservation. You know, that's why I get angry with schools. You know, they'll teach you who the father of the atom is and who the father of the nation is, but you need to know that Aldo Leopold is the father of conservation. And you need to get familiar with his concept of a land ethic. Well, you can get a little bit familiar by buying my book. Well, I could go on and on about how great this book is, but, <laughs> but I'll, I'll sound more stupid than I probably already do. Well, how many of you have seen Discovering Alabama? See, mark that down, listen, let's see, you think everybody knows me. All right, well, I am going to get angry now. Where y'all been? The ones that hadn't seen it. We're celebrating our 30th year of being your Emmy winning television program showcasing this remarkable state. So if you ain't seen it, you better, you better tune in. Or better yet, I think uh, 
I hope some of the teachers are with you all today. Get you a set of the shows, almost a hundred shows now with teacher guides that make learning come alive, connect it to the real world. And I might add for those of you who are teachers, all of that is correlated with Alabama's core standards, course of study and those kinds of things, just so you'll know. And uh, we've done shows that feature places up in this part of the state, scenes right in this area. So, uh, well, I don't want to gloat too much about the wonderful television series Discovering Alabama, but uh, uh, I am here today representing that, and uh, if you don't know about it, you are finding out. Well, I know y'all got other activities today, but you've got a, a, uh, a uh, environmentalist, I guess is the word, before you today. And if anyone wants to take a shot or ask a question, I'll be here for a few minutes and I'm going back to the woods. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What do I think about clear cutting? You'll have to buy my book. <laughs> well, I don't want to shock you, but uh, you know, most of the forest acreage is, is not, quote, virgin. I mean, it's been managed or not managed, or but one way or another affected over the years. And there are places where clear cutting is the best method to, to, to manage. There are places where it's not, you know, but that takes a longer discussion than that should have prompted somebody's evil concern somewhere. Well, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, mm -hmm. You'll have to buy the book. No, I, <laughs> it really is addressed quite well in the book. But uh, basically, the question is, what is what's a forest community? And um, if you're the right kind of scientist that studies these things, and we've been doing forest, of course, studies for a long time, uh, it, it, it becomes clear that there are uh, ecosystems, you know, and that, that kind of overlaps with the community. And it, it, it becomes a system where the plants, the animals, the soil, the water uh, uh, are interdependent on each other, and they, cre and they represent a living system that's unto itself, and, and it perpetuates itself until somebody disrupts it or something disrupts it. And, and typically, it includes a particular type of variety of tree species different than the other forest community. So, I hope that satisfies her. <laughs> Did you say how many forest There are more than 70. Yeah, yeah. And, and y'all were good to point out that you have it on good authority that the crepe myrtle is a tree because there, there were, we go through spells of debating what qualifies as a tree. And, um, uh, well, the book explains that. <laughs> you can buy the book. But uh, uh, in recent times, we've allowed what used to be called shrubs, many of them to count as trees. And, and boy, if you count those, uh, Alabama's got three times the tree species of any other state. Well, all right then, I ain't gonna wear out my welcome, but uh, get Aldo Leopold's Sand County Almanac, or better yet, get this book and learn a little bit about those things, and uh, I guess I'm directing that mostly at the teachers and the librarians and, and the others. Um, 30 years of cranking out this stuff, and uh, uh, I appreciate being invited because it's a chance to get the word out a little better. And, and it, it, after 30 years, it's time the word got out. <laughs> all right, well, I appreciate y'all. You got a nice campus and uh, hug a tree. All right, I'm going to the woods. Thank you. <laughs>